Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar in our webinar series. I'm Tianran Shi, the Senior Product Manager in Novogen EMEA. Uh, I will introduce Novogen briefly, and I'm so honored to moderate this webinar. Let me introduce our wonderful speaker to you, Dr. Xin Yu. She's the Senior Technical Support Manager uh, of Novogen EMEA. Her contents today include microbial service overview, microbial service details, and case studies. In the end, we will have Q&A session, and if you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them to the Q&A messaging box. And if we don't have enough time to reply, our colleague will contact you after webinar. Next, I would like to uh, take some time to introduce Novogen to you. Novogen is a global leader in NGS services. Uh, founded in 2011 and headquartered in Beijing, China, our goal is to using advanced genomics to improve life and human health. Uh, as you can see, we have global presence and labs in Singapore, China, US, and UK. Uh, our EMEA regional headquarters is located in Singapore and provides sequence services to uh, Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa, as well as, as, well as uh, across the region uh, through the uh, local partners. So why should you choose Novogen? Firstly, we have dedicated local professional technical support. They have vast experience to solve the various to solve various problems for you. And last year, we launched our customer service system for project and sample management. In this system, you can uh, submit your sample information and obtain data sample QC uh, report, data analysis report, and obtain uh, download your data. And this year is also Novogen's 10th anniversary. So we will insist on uh, providing reliable services uh, using our uh, with, with our extensive exper uh, experience, and as you know, we have uh, labs around the world, uh, so this would uh, help to short uh, shorter your turnaround time. So our end-to-end -end services manage every aspect of your genomic solutions, so you can focus on what you do best and let us take care of everything else. Uh, here are uh, our achievements over the years, and uh, Novogen allows scientists to uh, publish tons of papers uh, uh, on the top journals. And uh, we also have uh, more than thousands of partners around the world, like research organizations and universities, uh, companies, and hospitals. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the overview of Novogen services. In genome services, we have human or plant animal whole genome sequencing, human plant animal de novo sequencing, and whole exome sequencing. In transcriptome services, we have mRNA sequencing, non coding RNA sequencing, ice form sequencing use PEC file, and we also have 10x single cell gene expression service, spatial transatomic services. Uh, by the way, we have a new platform this year for single cell project. So our experts will lend their service on site uh, to for your single cell uh, project, and uh, uh, we will uh, from uh, we will uh, give you the help from the project design, library prep, and data analysis. So if you have any interest on this, please contact us. In the middle is the microbial services. So we will uh, we will uh, introduce all these microbial services uh, later. And uh, uh, we also have epigenomics, uh, include ChIP-seq, RIP-seq, whole genome, uh, 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 WGBS, and so on. The last one is about the oncology service. We have Novo PM 2.0, uh, Novo Focus, uh, and uh, a clinical WES. And uh, you know, Novogen has the most popular sequence platform like Illumina for NGS, uh, PET bio and nanopore for long reads and 10x genomics for single cell. So if you have any questions or interest on this service, please contact our local AMIA commercial team. Uh, they, uh, they have vast experience and very happy to help you with your NGS journal. 
Next, let's move on to our major events. Uh, welcome to Xinyu. Hi, Dr. Xinyu, how are you? Hi, Tianran. Everything is good in Singapore. I hope everything is fine over there for you. Fine. Okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> over to you. Yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you see my slide? Yes, we can see it. Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Xing Yun, the Senior Technical Support Manager of Novogen. Today, I'm going to share with you the microbial products, uh, means our service on the sequencing of microbial related product. I'll also talk a little bit more details on the service that uh, we'll provide and also like uh, sample requirements, what are the project workflow and the analysis that is available in our company. And next, I would like to share with you one of the latest update on our microbial diversity analysis pipeline. We have upgraded our pipeline to Chime 2 uh, as a backbone. And last but not least, about some of the case studies that are our collaborators of, or our customers that use our service for their publications. So, a uh, bit recapped on what is uh, micro, microbe and also microbiome. Microbe is the tiny living organism that are too small to be seen by human naked eye. Probably you will need a microscope to, to view on them. And microbiome is actually about the microbial community and their genetic material within this specific niche. So in Novogen, we have uh, services for different uh, applications on the microbial analysis for microbiome studies. We have the shotgun metagenome approach, the more specific amplicon based metagenome, or if you would like to look at the gene expression, we have the metatranscriptomes uh, approach to help you on your research. Whereas for pure cultures, we have the gene, genome, uh, sorry, genome de novo sequencing, the resequencing if the uh, assembly is not really required. And also for the prokaryote RNA sequencing, we do look at the transcriptome of uh, pure cultures. So uh, yeah, these are the overview on the services that are uh, available in Novogen related to the microbe. So, Let's uh, move on to the first one, the metagenome studies on uh, for the microbial community. So for the metagenome studies, basically we have two approaches. One is on the shotgun metagenome, where when uh, we get the DNA, we actually fragment all this uh, DNA, and then we prepare the library preparations and then proceed to the sequencing. Uh, the advantage of this approach is it has lower bias and also you do not need to have like uh, knowledge be beforehand on whether the diversity is rich of what kind of bacteria and so on. It also enables you to look at the genes that presence in the uh, metagenome samples. You, you can see uh, what are the functional genes that's available. However, one uh, disadvantage of this approach is uh, it requires high, higher sequencing and computer sequencing cost and the computational requirement is higher. The second approach that we have is on the Amplicon where you do not fragment the total genomic DNA. Instead, you use uh, universal primers of some of the primers that you have designed to amplify the gene of interest. Then uh, you just studies on these biomarkers. So this is a more cost effective way to studies on the microbial diversity and is also more sensitive. However, because this is a PCR base, it actually has a uh, uh, more prone to PCR bias. And on the functional uh, study side at the moment is uh, only a predictive contribution uh, because we don't really sequence the gene. So you can only predict and we don't really studies uh, on what is real, really presence there. So let's talk about more about the shotgun metagenomics. First, uh, for the metagenomes, we do uh, offer DNA extraction service on some of the sample type. For example, like soil sludge and feces, we will need about one gram of each of these samples. It's best if you can send us replicates, triplicates is required. So just in case uh, one of your sample doesn't have enough U, we will have uh, another samples where we can do another round of extractions and then make it uh, sufficient. If it's water sample, we'll require one liter of uh, water samples. It's best if you can give us a triplicate, but uh, for water samples, try not to freeze it because this will affect the downstream analysis uh, severely. That's why uh, 
we should just keep it in four degree. Then for library preparations on the shotgun metagenome, uh, if it's on the Illumina platform, we will choose on the uh, pair 150 sequencing approach. The insert size will be uh, average on average the 350 base pair. The DNA that sorry the samples that we will need if you are not sending the uh, raw materials for us is we need a genomic DNA a pure DNA. The amount and concentration is as listed. The volume um, we will re require more volume regardless of the amount and concentration because we will have to spare part of this samples for the sample QC. So please send us at least 20 microlit for the, your samples. If you would like to know more about the sample requirements, you can actually visit our official website, the novogene.com. Uh, all this inf information is listed. So sharing some of the uh, shotgun metagenome uh, approaches. So after the sequencing, when we get the raw data, we'll do a quality control. We'll throw away reads that is too short with the quality that is lower than uh, Q30, as well as uh, if there are some reads with more than 10% of ambiguous in between. After this, we call it a clean data with this uh, Quality access reads, we will do an assembly to build the database for the uh, context seed. So now we have some longer reads, and then we can proceed with the gene predictions. We call out all the CDS and we annotate this CDS using different databases. For the taxonomy and notations, we will use the MICRO and R database, whereas for the functional annotations, we will do it on multiple uh, annotated using multiple databases. After that, uh, we'll provide you with various uh, visualizations uh, figures, which you can choose which one you need for your uh, applications, publications, or uh, the, the downstreams that you need. So let's look at the taxonomy annotations. Basically, we will give you one of the most commonly uh, used graph is a bar graph on the relative abundance of each of these uh, organisms that present because this is a shotgun metagenome, it doesn't only uh, specify it on one organism. So now here see you have bacteria, you have insects, you have uh, proteins and so on. If this bar graph is not what you want, you will do have the heat map for your uh, analysis. Here we have the dendrograms on how it was clustering and also the top 35 organisms that is present. We will also give you the full data where you can manipulate and also uh, customize on the figures that you want for, for your analysis. So, uh, <clears throat> so next, uh, for the microbial diversity, in, instead of only the bar graph and also the heat map, we also provide some other uh, analysis like the UMA tree, how the samples cluster, so maybe this is one group, it gets clustered together or not. And also we do have uh, an MDS plot and PCOA plots. You can see the distance between the samples and how uh, similar is the genome assemblage. And this also applies on the uh, functional metagenome site. And last but not least, we do analyze the biomarkers that is present in your samples using the LFC analysis. So this one, uh, it will calculate the LDA score and then uh, if the score is confident enough that you, you can see it, like uh, sample C, it has a more significant of this uh, organism. So there's a biomarker studies on, on your samples. So for the functional annotations part, we do annotate the CDS using different uh, databases like the KGG, ECNO and KAZI database will give you the entire list and then you can uh, check out on which are the um, which are the genes that you are interested in, and also on the metabolic pathway that you would like to study. Last but not least, we do annotate the CDS against the uh, antibiotic resistance genes database. And uh, here, for example, we have this inter in inner rings that list the proportions of antibiotic resistant genes in different phyla and outside is like the proportion of genes in different phyla. So you can see uh, how many percent of the gene actually present from this phyla and how much of it is actually from the specific phyla. 
So uh, let me share with you one of our collaboration work with UMCGs, which use our uh, metagenome service to studies on the gut microflora of 10,000 participants. So here, the UMCG send us the faces samples and then they do the extractions. In Novogene, we, we use our expertise on the sequencing, uh, sorry, the library preparation and sequencing. We generate high quality reads and then we send it back to our collaborators, the UMCG for the data analysis. Uh, in this, this project, they would like to see what is the contribution of the gut microbiome in promoting good health and preventing disease. And they would like to also identify what are the good and bad microbiome, the factors that uh, affects the gut microbiome compositions and how are the genes pool get uh, changes when there's changes in the factors that uh, the environmental factor. And also with this data, we can help to develop the disease and disease prevention and treatment strategies. And it also helps a lot in understanding the gut microbiome and human health conditions. In the preliminary uh, studies with smaller sample size, they actually find that the gut microbiome is actually uh, highly affected by the intrinsic and exogenic factors. So it's like, uh, what are the food that intake? It actually changes the microbiome diversity. So uh, now they are processing more on the research objective. Let's uh, see how the research go and. We will, we will keep our own poster and see our, how, how is it, the results. Yeah, so basically that's for the shotgun metagenome. And next we move on to the amplicon metagenomes. So in Novogen, we actually amplify the 16S gene from bacteria and archaea. We also have the 18S RDNA universal primer for the euk eukaryotic uh, diversity studies within your metagenome samples. For fungus, you have another option. We have the IDS sequence. So you can check on what are the primers that we use from our official website is listed there, or you can check with our team and see if it's applicable to your studies. For 16S uh, microbiome studies, uh, this is more applicable to bacterial. We have another uh, service. We do provide the full length 16S sequencing where you do not need to choose like what are the uh, regions that you would like to study. Instead, you take the full line 16S. So this actually uh, has an advantage because it gives higher resolutions of the microbial diversity. And because uh, it, the resolution is higher, you actually doesn't need uh, as high sequence depth as compared to the Illumina platform. And of course, here we use the updated pipeline for the uh, analysis, which is on the chime tool. So basically the workflow is uh, you will send uh, us the DNA mm -hmm. and then we, as usual, we will do a quality control before we amplify the full length 16S gene. And we will check if the uh, gene amplifier is at the correct size. After that, we will do some purifications and also the library preparations. If the library uh, pass our library QC, we will proceed with the pet bio sequencing and the raw data we will assess the quality. If the quality is good and the output is sufficient, means uh, as contracted, then we'll proceed to the uh, analysis as well. So what if your gene of interest or targeted region is not in the list of primers that is listed in our official website? Don't worry, you can also customize primer uh, with us. So for this one, we will evaluate it case by case, but uh, basically is like this, we will need your, if you are sending us the PCR product, we will need your help to add a barcode to your samples if you would like to like pull a few samples together. Why would you need to pull a few samples together is because our minimum uh, purchase is one, gig, one gigabases of data per, uh, per purchase, but uh, sometimes you don't need that, that much of data. So we have another package for you to like save your cost. You can pull up to 40 sam samples in one uh, library and then we, we will do a double plexing so that uh, you can have more data at lower cost. So if this approach is to purchase, you will have to add a barcode at the end of your sequence. And then you will send this barcoded amplicons to Novogene. We will add another index on this barcode. So it's like, 
a pool of library, we'll, we'll construct another library of it. And then we proceed to the sequencing. So how are we going to deal with this data? Because there are like two layers of things. How do we pull, pull it up? So after the sequencing, we will do one round of demultiplexing using the index that was added by Novogen. After that, we will do another demultiplexing based on the barcode that you have provided. Or if the overlapping between read one and read two is intended, but please bear in mind that the longest read length that we can handle is 470 base pair. This is because of the limitations on our sequencer. We can sequence it the max pair and 250. So if the amplicon size is longer than the 470 base pair, we cannot uh, overlap it. So read one and read two, there will be a gap in between. So let's talk about some of the sample requirements. Here are the sample requirements for the uh, amplicon sequencing. Do note that if you want to uh, use the uh, one library, per, sorry, for the customized PSR product, if you want one samples per library, we'll need more uh, amplicon because we, if can, we prefer not to do another round of PCR on this samples anymore. So we'll need more of these uh, samples. Uh, the volume is similar. So you can find this piece of information in our official website as well. Yeah. Let me share a little bit more about our new update on our analysis pipeline. Now we have changed the backbone of our 16S analysis from Chime version 1.7 to Chime version 2. Yeah. So what is the best thing about this is Chime version 1.7 nine and below is actually not supported by the developer and community anymore, but time two is still developing and is supported by the community. So if you have any questions, you can ask us or you can actually submit your questions to their Chime community. You just need to register uh, from their forum and then you can submit your questions there. Either the developer or those experienced researchers, they will help them on the question. So you have more source of uh, solutions now. So some of the uh, advantage on this uh, Chime 2, the next generation microbiome analysis platform is free and is open source. And Chime 2 is easier to install. Moreover, it can automatically track your analysis. It has some interactive uh, user interface. It's not, not fully command line. You can actually uh, plug and play. And it's easier to share your results with your team even uh, with uh, researchers that is not using this pipeline, you can actually share the results with them. They can just view it on the browser. And now they will have a lot of plugin based system. You can choose uh, what are the tools that you want to use and the tools is still developing. So you have more uh, useful tool that is coming soon. Yes. So this is uh, exciting. As for our chat analysis pipeline, uh, the first step is basically the same as the shotgun metagenome. We will do a quality control, throw away reads that has low uh, threat score and reads that is too short that can, cannot be overlapped or has a high level of ambiguous. And because this is amplicon based, we need to do an additional step, which is to remove the chimerics reads. The chimeric reads is generally introduced by the uh, PCR and it causes the bias. Then for time two, now we will as default, we will do the ASV analysis instead of the OTU. Then uh, here we will do the taxonomy uh, annotations. We will calculate the alpha diversity within the samples, which allows you to see the species richness and also the evenness of each samples. And if you would like to compare between the samples and between the groups, we do the beta diversity analysis as well. And then uh, some statistical tests to see if the presence of certain uh, organism is significantly higher than the rest or the changes in, my, in the microbiome environment, is it significant? And last but not least, now we have these functional predictions using PyCross 2 with our standard analysis pipeline. This was not in our, our previous analysis pipeline. You have to pay extra and it's uh, considered as an advanced analysis. And it was PyCross 1 in, in the previous version. So now if you go for our trying Trying to analyze this package, this is included and there's no additional cost. So uh, 
a little bit more information on the ASV, ASV and OTU. Basically, this is used by our Chime 2 pipeline, and this one is on our previous pipeline, Chime 1. Uh, so when to choose this is if you have a new project, I will recommend you to go for the new one because uh, this is like a later trend in, in the market. But if you have a continued project, maybe you would like to use the same uh, analysis approaches so you can still opt for the OTU. So for the ASV is basically on the noise or like dereplication approach. There's no clustering. They just compare the sequence and if they have at least 99% similarity, they will call as one ASV. Whereas for the OTU is they check if two sequence has at least 97% similarity, they will get clustered into one OTU. And based on this clustering, they will choose a representative sequence and we do the taxonomy annotations on the representative sequence. Whereas for the ASV, because it's a denoise and in the end you have a list of ASV and then we will directly annotate the taxonomy against the ASV. This gives you a higher resolutions because uh, the similarity within the sequence is 99%. So you can go up to the species level, uh, diversity at the species level. And OTU, um, mainly they will, we will just recommend you to look up to the genus level. But ASV, because it looks on the, uh, it depends on the jury replications, but not clustering. So if the reads generated by the sequencing is at the lower quality, it actually has higher impact on the downstream analysis. Whereas for RTO, because it's just choosing one representative sequence, the impact of the reads quality is actually lower. For ASV, you can easily compare between two studies. However, for OTU's uh, approach, you have to re re redo the classifications before you can proceed with the downstream analysis. For the ASV, the downside is you will need a higher computational requirement, whereas for OTU, a lower computational requirement is required. Yeah. So these are some of the uh, results that we'll give you to if you are purchasing our Chime 2 uh, approach, yeah, there are some ternary plots and Venn diagram to allow you to see how many OTUs there is unique to one sample or group or, and the shared OTUs between them or the ASP. Then uh, you'll have the microbial composition assemblage heat map and also the bar graph. And one of the good thing about this Chime 2 is it has some flexibility. You do not need to come always come to us if you would just like to custom uh, to generate a new graph you can do it at your site there's uh, this form you can click and open in the browser you just choose what are the text for example here you just choose what is the taxonomy level that you would like to see and then ta -da, you can actually uh, regenerate the graph as you like so these are the things that you can play with yeah then on top of the microbial diversity, we will do the alpha diversity studies based on different matrices. We choose a few metrics to allow you to uh, have a better view on the microbial diversity. So for example, like Chawan, you, have, you can check on the, it's, more, it's weighted more on the species richness and some are weighted more on the evenness. We also provide the good coverage so you know that your sequencing gap and also uh, have you subsampled enough for the uh, for your studies. Of course, we do provide the refraction curve. Using, so if it's reaches plateau, you know that uh, you have subsequent enough for your studies. If not, maybe you need to sequence more on the, uh, to get enough data for the, the downstream analysis. We, for the comparison between two groups and two samples, we calculate the beta diversity using the matrices and then depends on the, the metric distance, we will see if they were clustered together, if these two samples were distance or they were close. Yeah. So this is our new features, the functional prediction site. So now uh, based on the microbial diversity, we can actually uh, make use of the available databases because there are a lot of my, uh, metagenome studies out there. Then they will, we will do in uh, predictions on the ba basing on the microbial assemblage and we see what are the gene, genes that might present and we predict the contribution of this uh, bacterial pool in the community and we do some significant uh, t-test analysis to for the functional difference between the group of this, all the samples. Yeah, let me share with you one of the studies by our uh, customers. 
they uses our Amplicon sequencing service and also the and they also purchase the analysis service. So part of this the studies, uh, the results actually, uh, you can see how our, our analysis helped them. So in this studies, they would like to investigate the size effect of the microplastic on the accumulations and emulation of this phenanthrene in the earthworm. So why is this important? Because the microplastic actually can uh, bind easily to this phenanthrene, which is one of the organic pol pollutants. It can cause daily effect on the earthworm. Earthworm is one of the ben beneficial organisms uh, that we need for especially like agricultures. So in these studies, they do a DNA extraction on the uh, earthworm gut, and then they send us a DNA. Here we do the uh, we amplify the 16S genes. We prepare the library, and then we do the sequencing and also the preliminary analysis, which is our our standard uh, analysis package. And then we send the data back to our customer. They merge it with their metadata, and then uh, that's where they publish this paper. So from one of the analysis, they can see that there are similarity and differences between their samples. So this, these are the Venn diagrams from the papers. And also the uh, preliminary microbial <laughs> compositions allowed them to see that uh, for the nano size, microplastic actually significantly suppress the diversity of phenanthrene degrading bacteria in the earthworm gut. So why is this important? It's because without this group of bacteria, it actually causes higher residues and concentration of phenanthrene in the earthworm, which is actually uh, toxic to the earthworm. They, do, they also do some biomarker studies and also the transcription uh, transcription on the gene expressions. And then they found that the largest size of the microplastic actually caused severe damage to the earthworm because it's uh, causes earlier accumulations of the entry in earthworm. So uh, if, the if the accumulation starts earlier, means after sometimes the concentrations in the earthworm's body is higher and then the effects is clearer. Oh uh, yeah, this entry also affects the digestive and some of the functional genes within the uh, earthworm. So in conclusion, the micro size uh, microplastic and the co-presence co of the actually exhibit greater genotoxicity, uh, genotoxicity to the earthworm, which is pretty sad. The, the size of this microplastic actually affects how the uh, organic pollutants that does the beneficial terrestrial organism, and it also causes harm to them. Yeah, Basically, there's uh, an overview on our microbial community studies and the service available for this one. Next, we move on to uh, the service for the individual species. If you have a pure cultures and you would like to know uh, what is this bacteria or you would like to check on insight into the genome of this bacteria, we do have our genome de novo sequencing package. So uh, for a cost-effective one, you will have this uh, draft map. You will sequence it using the short reads or the Illumina platform. For bacteria, we will recommend uh, sequence up to 100 times coverage which usually gives you about the, around 200 contexts and below, which is good enough for the submissions and also publications. If you are not satisfied with just a draft map, you would like to look more into the genome. We do have a complete map, which is sequenced using PetBio, also 100 times. This one, uh, you will get a complete chromosome. And if you have plasmid, we can also solve it at a higher resolution as well. For fungal genome, because the complexity is higher, so we will need the short reads to curate the pack bio long reads. So we will recommend you to sequence it on both platform. And the data output that we promise is a, a context of at least N50 uh, size. Some of the sample requirements, uh, do take note that the pack bio sequence means the complete map or the fine map from the fungi is higher because the input requirement for the library preparation for pack bio platform is higher. Or uh, same goes for our Oxford Nanopore platform. Do contact us if you have uh, further inquiry or if you are interested in, in our service and uh, or you can check on our official website before you contact us. So for the novel assembly, uh, basically the first step is we will do a data cleaning. After that, we will assemble the data. 
with the context, we will predict the uh, CDS and then we do a functional annotations. So if you are going for a complete map approach, we'll give you something like this is an overview on uh, the, com the chromosome and also each of these uh, features in it, like the coding genes and the GC content and so on. So get a map. If you already know what is your uh, organisms and you do not need the uh, context or the complete genome, but you will, you are interested to look at the differences between the wild type uh, bacterial genome and, and also the mutant. Genome resequencing is a good approach. Uh, you, you can use a wild type or you choose a represent, uh, sorry, a reference genome from the database. And then after the sequencing, we can just map to it and then we can see the structural variants and all kinds of mutations that it has. So for this one, you do not need the very high uh, resolution like CPAC biocomplete sequencing. You will just, we will recommend you to go for the Illumina one. For the sequencing depth, uh, we would like to cap the bacterial one at 100 times and 50 times. For this approach, it's not like the deeper the merrier because it will cause us false positives. So our recommendation is you keep the sequencing depth below 200 times. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the sample requirement is more or less the same as the previous one. You can check on our official website. So for the resequencing uh, data analysis, first we will do a cleanup on the data. Then we will map it to the reference genome that you have selected. Uh, it's best if you can give us a complete genome. Uh, and if the genome is annotated, we can annotate the very uh, variance uh, uh, using the ref uh, data from the reference genome. If not, we can do a mapping and then we can also let you know what are the uh, variations like the SMP, indel, structural variance and so on. We will give you an overview on how, how, uh, how are the, uh, how to say, the mutations or, or the variations looks like. For this approach, we will require the two more files for the analysis. Or you will have to tell us what is the reference genome that you want. And also we need the annotated uh, reference genome file so that we can uh, do an annotations and let you know uh, the variation actually affected uh, which genes and so on. Yes, so if you have difficulty in doing DNA extractions, now Novagene, we are doing, uh, we are do having one promotion on this. You can actually send us your bacterial cell pellets for DNA extractions. Now we have 40% off on the uh, DNA extraction part. It's valid until September. So please contact our sales representative and grab this offer before it ends. Next, we will move on to the uh, gene expression studies. So for the gene expression studies, one more thing that you will have to take note is on the uh, in the ring number means the integrity of your RNA. It has to be at least uh, six and above. This is an example on the non-degraded uh, uh, RNA with high quality. It applies to both uh, transcriptome and meta metatranscriptome studies. So for the uh, transcriptome studies, uh, first we'll do a QC and then we will map it to the reference genome that I've provided and we will do our predictions on what are they transcribed. And then we will have an analysis on the differential expression if you are, are comparing between samples. And also we do some uh, gene structural analysis. If you are going for the metagenome, uh, sorry, metatranscriptome approach, the front part is the same. The QCA data extension and transcript assembly will assemble the short reads into a longer one. And before we do the annotations, the annotations are uh, separated into two parts. One is on the functional part, and another one is on the taxonomy part. And of course, we will do the gene expressions analysis and differential expression analysis if you have more samples and also uh, some of the enrichment analysis. So do contact us if you have more, um, <clears throat> more that you want to share with us. Yeah, so these are the sales representatives that we have across the regions, uh, some of you may know them, you can directly talk to our sales re representative. If you have more questions and you do not know who to contact, you can al always contact us at our official, uh, through our official email. Our 
correspond the correspondent personnel will actually uh, assign you to the correct person. Yeah. yeah, that's all from my presentations today. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your detailed and useful presentation on microbial services. And we have uh, several questions in chat box and Q and A box. Uh, the first question I, I would like to help you to answer. Uh, do uh, from uh, first question is from Critican. Uh, do you provide service from sample from Thailand? From samples from Thailand? Yes, of course. Uh, we have local commercial team in uh, Thailand, and you can uh, leave your email information. And our colleague will contact you uh, through the email. Uh, and the second question is uh, from also from Critican. I would like to analysis fecal samples from rats. Does the mm. amount of sample required for the analysis is one gram? Oh, uh, yes, basically we'll request one gram, but if you really have difficulty to get enough samples, we can discuss on this and uh, give it a try. We do have experience handling samples that doesn't meet the requirements uh, and we'll see how, how much of the DNA you can get from there and then we can work from there. Sometimes uh, we, we actually request for more samples just in case uh, anything goes wrong, we can have something to troubleshoot. So uh, it's not necessary that it must stick to one gram, you can actually talk to us. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. The third question from chat box uh, is from uh, uh, Busan Lim. Uh, mm. Is there a limitation on number of sample we can multiplex? I suppose this should be applicant. Yes, for Ampicon, we actually uh, can multiplex up to 40 samples only. This is because uh, if you if the plexing is too high, the chances of getting enough data will be lower. Or if some of the sample doesn't behave good, uh, behave well, it might affect the entire library preparations. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, Another question about barcode from Lisa. How does the barcoding works? Uh, are you able to expand on that? Uh, yes. So imagine when you would like to amplify on the region of interest, we'll have a pair of primer that you can you do the amplifications. So at the end of this primer, you just need to add like eight bases to 10 bases of this barcode for us. So when you do the amplifications, it will automatically uh, amplify the gene of interest plus the, it will add the barcode at the end of the sequence. Okay, yeah, so thanks. yeah, so when you send it to us, it's already a barcode PCR product. Okay, uh, there's another question, a new question from uh, Sarah Jia, uh, MK. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for the question is for metatranscriptome from human or animal, gut mm -hmm. samples, uh, how do you ensure depletion of host RNA, both ribosomal and poly A? Uh, for the ribosomal removal, we will have the ribosomal kit that uh, tailor, that target on this samples. If you know that the host uh, gene RNA contaminations will will be high, please let us know. We can uh, actually change the kit to target the eukaryotic one instead of more on the uh, prokaryotic one. If really needs them, we'll have to deplete both. Another approach is if like uh, you know that the host transcript, the tr host tr the transcript from host is really high, and we might need to do some uh host removal, a uh, host gene removal. So it's like you have the human genome downloaded, you map it, and then you remove everything related to the host before the downstream analysis. Yes, yes, I know we have RNA depletion kit for both eukaryotic and the prokaryotic species, mm. right? Yeah. Okay, uh, so more questions about the barcode, uh, you can contact us, uh, contact colleagues, colleagues or uh, contact us through email. And let's move on to the Q&A box. Uh, the first one uh, question is uh, from uh, uh, someone who, I don't know, uh, does this mean Novogen only have ASV method for the an an analysis? Uh, no, we have both ASV and also the OTU. You can choose uh, on the analysis approach that you want. Just let us know before the analysis start, then we can arrange it for you. Yes, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, also ask from uh, 
from this audience, what is the difference between O2 and ASV and which is better? Oh, for now, the trend actually moved more to the ASV because it has it allows you to have a higher uh, resolution building on the microbial diversity is confidence up to species level as compared to the OTU. And because this is based on the dereplication approach means like week one, you have one sequence and then you compare week two, if the two sequence are at least 99% similar, they can call it like uh, replicates, then they just remove one of it. And then uh, all this, uh, the number of reads that can match to the first read at, 90, at least 99% similarity, they will just record it and use it at the abundance calculations. So here uh, is more confidence that this sequence is a correct one as compared to the OTU clustering, but some of this uh, reads in my force at the borderline between the two uh, OTU clusters. So it's like, if you redo the clustering, chances of this uh, reads move from OTU one to OTU two uh, is higher if you compare to the ASB. So now the research trend actually moved towards the ASB approach at the moment. Okay, uh, so uh, another question from uh, Jonathan Tang, mm. and uh, he asked uh, which is understand the pipeline, ASV or OTU? Oh, uh, this one depending on the uh, analysis pipeline that you have purchased. At the moment, if you purchase our package starting from July, we will uh, by default we'll set it as the uh, Chime 2 ASV. And if you purchase the package before this, time period is actually on the OTU. But if we haven't kickstarted the analysis, you can still let us know and we will just uh, change the according, according to your request. Yes, uh, currently uh, both ASV and the OTU are under our standard pipelines. So customer yeah. actually can choose one of them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yes, next because we understand that there's a lot of continuity mm. project. They might need the OTU more than the ASV. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, next question uh, I can answer for you. Uh, if I add barcodes to PCR products for pack biosequencing, you can help me separate my samples. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, if your barcodes are from pack bio uh, official website, uh, yes, sure, we can do the debunk multiplex for you. But you have to offer us the provide us the barcode information to further evaluation. Okay. Next question is also from uh, Jonathan Tan. Uh, can you explain the difference between read and raw text under AmpliCanSeq? Reads is like uh, after the sequencing because it's too full. So here the, the raw reads, we call it the uh, read one and read two. And if you merge these two together internally, we call it text. It's sort of like an internal term for Novogen to differentiate between the stages of the analysis. So if you're checking the uh, information in other websites or like China partner, they don't call it text, but internally we call it text. It's just for us to easy separate it. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, next question uh, from uh, UX. Uh, for a complete map of bacteria, you use PacBio CCS mode or CLR mode? Yeah, I think we use CR. Uh, CLR, CLR. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, next question from uh, Reading uh, Krishna. Uh, uh, how to convert raw data of whole genome seek from FASTQ format to FASTA format? Uh, you can use those uh, analysis software or even like uh, Chime, they have this Perl script. They can, you can just put in the FASTQ because FASTQ file, they, they have this additional line on the quality. Basically, you can just remove that one and then it become a FASTA. Or if you are doing data trimming, uh, most of the tools like Trimomatics or this, they can actually output the FASTA file for you. Yeah. Okay. So the conversion is easy, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question from uh, Sarazia. Uh, for meta transcriptome from human or animal gut samples, how do you ensure depletion of host RNA, both ribosomal and poly A? Oh, this one will have to rely on the mapping data and see if the RNA, the, so we will map the reads according to the database and we'll see if the RNA, uh, the reads that map to RNA genes, it is high. 
yeah, yeah. I think the we uh, have a percentage on and the calculations on this part. Okay, I think our uh, ribosome uh, RNA depletion okay it is. Uh, maybe have uh, not have a, a very well uh, depletion uh, results on all the species. So it depends on the species, I think, mm. and experience on the kit. Okay, next one uh, from uh, PSAT. Uh, in case of amplicant sequence of fungi, which database for blast? Oh, for the fungus at the moment, we, we are using Unite. Uh, is specific for the fungus. So far, the annotation is fine. So I think for the blood sample, you might you can consider this one as well. Okay, thank you. Last question. Uh, what is the length recommended for barcode for pack bio? Uh, barcode for pack bio. Yes. Length of barcode for pack bio. Length of. Uh, usually, uh, if I'm I remember correctly, we will still recommend eight to ten bases. Okay. Yeah. This one, uh, you can contact us and we can double check it for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Uh, I think the barcode is uh, the best uh, for us is to uh, add the barcode by us, by Novogen. That would be, uh, uh, that would be uh, convenient for us, uh, for the lab, for the library prep and the analysis, I think. Yes, if that is the case, yeah, we take in the DNA and then we do the amplification as well as the adding the barcode for you. Yeah, we will. Uh, I think uh, we will do the amplica amplification. Uh, we will add the barcode during the using the amplification. Uh, and uh, for the sixteen S four lens impact bio. Uh, okay. I think we already answered most of the. Uh, another. One new question from Jonathan Town. Uh, will there any additional if we select it, select other than V3 or QV4 region in 16S? Oh, so. Um, there any additional? I'll, okay. I'll assume that uh, you would like to sequence uh, the other hypervariable regions from the 16S. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a particular region and the primer is not in the list, we will, for, we will put it under this customized primer uh, sections. Then uh, the cost... You have additional cost. Yes. Right. yes. Because each of the, the primer for each samples has to be uh, customized. The barcode for each samples have, uh, needs to be a different one. That's why uh, even though the, the gene of interest means the primer section is the same, but we still have to order one primer for each samples because of the barcode. Yes, of course. Okay, I think we don't have any new question. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, if you have any other questions, you can contact us through the email or uh, contact the local commercial team. They will be very happy to help to reply all the uh, problems, all the questions and help you to uh, start your microbial service journey. Thank you, thank you all of you. Thank you, Xinyu. Yeah, thanks, Aaron, too. Uh, so after this webinar, we will have a survey. Uh, so please help us uh, on this survey so we can get more information on customers. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.